गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन इन टूडेज लेक्चर विल डिस्कस अबाउट सिंगुलर वेल्यू डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ ए रेक्टेंगुलर मैट्रिक्स और सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स यू कैन कॉल इट सो टिल नाउ वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन आइगन वैल्यू डिकम्पोजिशन एंड स्पेक्ट्रल थियरम सो इन द आइगन वैल्यू डिकम्पोजिशन वी हैव सीन दैट इफ यू आर हैविंग अ मैट्रिक्स एंड वी कम अप विथ आइगन बेसिस ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स आइगन बेसिस वी इन शॉर्ट वील राइट इट आइगन बेसिस ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स और we call it eigen basis for matrix a remember that here a is a, a square matrix simply we are putting condition that a is a square matrix n by n a square matrix so a is a n by n a square matrix that means a belongs to an uh, with real entries okay a belongs to uh, r to the power n cross n real entries okay if that this kind of matrix then we come up with uh, change of basis matrix x whose columns happen to be eigen basis uh, for the given matrix a that means eigen vector of matrix a and uh, we can write as as uh this mat n by n matrix whose first first column is b1 second column is uh, b2 and third column is b3 likewise it will go on the last column nth column would be vn okay it is vn nth column is vn so this is change of basis matrix with, with respect to eigen basis what we got if if you are lucky here situation is coming that if you are lucky then you will get eigen basis for the uh, given uh, a square matrix if you are lucky it is not like that always uh, a square matrix is having eigen basis it is not always possible uh, only those matrix what we call it diagonalizable those are having eigen basis so in that case we write matrix a in the form of um, s that uh, basis change of basis matrix time lambda time s inverse so if uh, this notation is helping to compute uh, e to the power n n may be any uh, natural number so it is helping to compute power of given matrix n that means exponent exponent of any exponent positive exponent of a or even uh, also you can call negative uh, exponent so you can talk about uh, integers n is integer simply so it would be what e to the power n would be s into here just uh, lambda uh, element of lambda the diagonal entries would be raised here and here s e to the power n is what s into lambda to the power n times s inverse so it is very it is helping to compute uh, power of a given a square matrix if it is getting a diagonal form this diagonal eigen value uh, decomposition what we call it it is coming to eigen basis of the given matrix okay so this we have already uh, seen but it is uh, if you are lucky then you are getting it so, so it is not possible for every square matrix so second case we had discussed that when a is a square matrix and symmetric if you are taking a symmetric matrix with real entries here a is a matrix for a special kind of matrix that that means a transpose equal to a in that case always there is a guarantee that you will get eigen basis eigen basis and more than that along with gram smith orthogonalization operation you can get orthonormal eigen basis under the gram smith orthogonalization hmm, orthogonalization you will get orthonormal uh, eigen basis that means in place of s we will have here s is this s would be what it would it would be orthogonal matrix here uh, the whatever eigen vector we will get we can uh, eigen vector will be uh, transformed to orthonormal eigen vector so we are denoting orthonormal eigen vector by u1 u2 u3 up to un why because these are orthogonal and unit vector so u is taken from unit vector criteria so uh, 
that's where this notation is coming un so s is here orthogonal in nature in that case and the eigen values happens to be real always real for a symmetric matrix in that case uh, s inverse would be because it is a orthogonal matrix this matrix is orthogonal matrix ortho in short i will write o dot g dot m orthogonal matrix this one okay so due to that here s inverse the inverse of orthogonal matrix how we get it by uh, performing transpose of the matrix so the s inverse would be just equal to s transpose so it is very easy to compute uh, transpose that's why very easy to finding the inverse of that okay so due to that we will get i diagonalization form in much simpler than the previous case so what would be here the a will be written as in term of s time lambda into s transpose the inverse becomes a s inverse become x transpose so you can see that it is much simpler it is much simpler so all these we had already seen okay so now in today's lecture we will talk about that if you are having a any uh, any matrix other than symmetric other than symmetric so can we get ortho uh, normal eigen basis other than symmetric so in symmetric we get it but other than symmetric how will get other than symmetric i am talking about it may be a square matrix but not symmetric it may be rectangular matrix uh, rep rectangular matrix that we definitely we will talk about that one is not symmetric other if you are taking other than symmetric matrix so those category simply we call it in category of singular kind of matrices those are just name classical name you don't have to be very stick with singular name so other than simply we are taking other than symmetric matrix so in that case so two situation will come here either we will have a square matrix with determinant uh, 0 a would be a square matrix and it's have, it is having it is uh, it is not symmetric a is a square matrix but not symmetric and whose determinant is 0 and uh, okay not symmetric non symmetric simply say that here yeah, this one is 0 so that is the condition of what we call it uh, other than symmetric okay determinant is a singular matrix simply we care a transpose here it is not equal to a a transpose is not equal to a simply that means non symmetric singular matrix okay non symmetric singular matrix other case you can take m by n matrix rectangular matrix so you are free to take any kind of matrix not but not symmetric so if that kind of thing then definitely uh, you will not go for a spectral theorem so a is m by n matrix so how you will find ortho normal basis for such kind of matrix it is very much difficult to get ortho normal basis directly because it is not satisfying the spectral theorem okay so how you will find that so there is a technique to come up with singular uh, pairs in place of eigen pairs we will define singular pairs so why because if you are taking a m by n matrix then we can come up with two matrix of a special type a product kind of matrix so one would be a transpose a so it would be always a matrix other product matrix would be a into a transpose so based on the positioning of matrix a we can say that the first one is right product matrix and the second one is left product matrix because a coming uh, right hand side so we can say that right product matrix just notation convention just uh, uh, your for your under, uh, understanding from a rectangular matrix you are uh, constructing this kind of thing okay at this a into a transpose you can call it uh, left uh, product matrix just for your understanding here because the corresponding eigen vector will help will have the same name left and right um, in the singular form so product matrices if you are talking about uh, product matrices uh, from a given rectangular matrices so consider we are having an m by n matrix a then the product matrices a transpose a that right product matrix and 
uh, second one um, left product matrix a into a transpose both would be symmetric first condition both would be symmetric okay a is whether symmetric or not but a transpose a would be symmetric and a into a transpose that would be also symmetric and both will have same set of non zero eigen values okay so second this second proof is little bit difficult you have to again go to four fundamental subspecies in order to look uh, that and further if r is the rank of the matrix a then rank and r is rank is less than minimum of m and n then we can say that the both the symmetric product matrices are having a r number of non zero eigen values okay so the proof if you talk about proof is very simple yeah, about symmetricity of these product matrices so if you talk about uh, uh, this right uh, uh, product matrix so just find the transpose of uh, this one so what would be as per you know that transpose of product of two matrices it is defined as uh, b transpose into a transpose same uh, concept we are applying here okay here a is equal to a transpose and b equal to uh, a so what is that transpose of product of ab it is b transpose time a transpose same property of the product uh, of transpose we are applying here so based on that what does we get here it becomes so this one here a, a becomes a transpose and this one a transpose of transpose so it is a dual transpose a transpose with dual operator that means if you apply transpose two times it becomes it, it give backs uh, our original matrix itself so the transpose of uh, this uh, uh, right product matrix is equal to itself so we can say that it is a symmetric matrix so we can easily see that it is a symmetric matrix that right transpose uh, right product matrix is a, a symmetric matrix likewise also we can see that uh, left transpose mat left product matrix is also symmetric in similar way okay so we have already seen that uh, these two are symmetric rest of thing if you are really uh, believe in finding number of non zero uh, singular vector uh, which is related to rank of the matrix and also a linear number of linearly independent column so you have to go for four fundamental sub spaces or uh, that one is part of fundamental theorem so from there you can deduce it and that one is part of higher uh, classes so if time permit we will discuss later four fundamental sub spaces based on that you can establish that thing. i am just uh, avoiding this right now four fundamental sub spaces criteria will be applied here in order to establish okay so now i am taking one example here so you can see here this matrix is what 2 by 3 matrix so rectangular matrix 2 by 3 matrix so how we will get orthonormal eigen basis similar to orthonormal eigen basis for this kind of uh, matrix uh, using this kind of matrix okay so we will get two set of orthonormal eigen basis why because a is a matrix uh, which define a linear transformation from where to where it is 2 by 3 matrix so it define a linear transform from r3 to r2 because a is a 2 by 2 matrix so it is defining a linear transformation from r3 to r2 so one set of uh, eigen basis for r3 we will get another sorry, orthonormal basis we will get another set of orthonormal basis we will get for r2 so that two criteria is coming so let us talk about uh, uh, right product and left product matrix so we are having here a uh, as a 2 by 3 matrix so from here we will first compute uh, uh, right product matrix that means a transpose a so what what would be it would be 3 by 2 into 2 by 3 that means it is a 3 by 3 matrix we can observe that okay and what is left product matrix it is uh, what, that 2 by 3 into 3 by 2 so that means in total uh, it would be 2 by 2 matrix left uh, product matrix okay so 2 by 2 matrix so if you talk about these two matrices these two are uh, these two product matrices are symmetric in nature so easily as per uh, algorithm what we had discussed to compute uh, eigen pairs of this matrix and this matrix and eigen pair of a transpose a non zero eigen pair would be what 3 and 1 okay 3 1 but remember that this one is having uh, size 2 by 2 okay so it will have just two eigen vector 
just two eigen vector up to algebraic multiplicity and those are actually those are three and one okay fine but if you talk about uh, the right product matrix so it is a three by three matrix so up to algebraic multiplicity it is a symmetric in nature so you can easily see so it will have three eigen uh, values so what is third eigen value for uh, right product matrix that if you observe uh, you have if uh, that, that is the beauty of th these two product matrices if you get a smaller size product matrices first compute the eigen value of that and those if all happen to be non zero then uh, the uh, this one is a smaller size if you have computed it is having two eigen value 3 and 1 then it will have these two eigen these two as also eigen value of a transpose a okay then what is the third one third one would be always zero third would third one would be uh, always so lambda 3 equal to 0 uh, if you are start from a into a transpose you can get uh, these two first and it will have just two eigen values so you got and this will have three uh, eigen values so what is the third one third one is zero by default zero okay so that's mean both are sharing the same set of non-zero eigen values that is the beauty of these two product matrices now uh, in the similar way if you are willing to compute uh, eigen vector again first compute eigen vector of a into a transpose that means left product matrix uh, what is that u1 uh, would be 1 1 and we need to normalize it and u2 would be minus 1 1 we can see that because it is a, a left product matrix is a symmetric matrix so easily we can say that these two vector happens to be orthogonal to each other and we have to make it orthonormal so that's why we are normalizing by the norm okay norm of the corresponding vector so that means u1 u2 are forming orthonormal basis for r2 thanks to the matrix a okay so it is not directly coming from eigen value it is coming eigen uh, eigen values of left product matrix a into a transpose so it is forming an orthonormal eigens it is an orthonormal orthonormal basis for uh, r2 okay that codomain space what we call it okay uh, through uh, left product matrix likewise if you are willing to compute eigen vector of a transpose a because it is a 3 by 3 matrix so you will get three eigen values with respect to three you will get this eigen value with respect to one you will get this eigen value with respect to zero you will get this eigen value all these three eigen value will be perpendicular to each other why because these eigen value all these eigen vector would be perpendicular to each other why be because all these are associated with different eigen values so that's where perpendicular nature is coming uh, here and i had discussed that one is a very interesting property of uh, symmetric matrix okay so again these will form eigen uh, orthonormal uh, orthonormal eigen basis i should put it here uh, orthonormal basis right now just put uh, orthonormal basis of uh, four uh, r3 do, the domain okay for r3 so we here based on the nature of matrix it is a rectangle matrix we are getting two set of eigen uh, orthonormal basis two set uh, thanks to uh, eigen basis of orthonormal eigen basis of product matrices okay product matrices that we got it so that is the beauty of uh, 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 product matrices and if you talk, say that it is very much you can say that one application of a spectral theorem why a spectral theorem is meant for symmetric matrices and these two matrices are symmetric that's why we are getting these kind of uh, product it is always true it is not like that uh, just by luck we got it it is always true if you are taking a uh, any matrix m by n matrix and if you do define these kind of two product always you will get ortho normal eigen basis for those product matrices okay those product matrices i am not saying that uh, for matrices those product orthonormal eigen basis for those product matrices okay so you are having two set of product matrices so you will get two set of orthonormal eigen basis first one is this one and second one is this one okay like this one is for codomain this one is for domain so uh, i think it might be clear to everyone the beauty of product of a rectangular matrices okay so now once we are having idea of this one then we will define singular pair of a rectangular matrix okay so those happens to be we 
in the last case we have already taken an m by n matrix that means a j matrix uh, which is defined from where to where which, which is defined from r n to r n is a linear transformation defined from r n to r n r n ok that is way we say that you can write it here t of x equal to a time x and a is the matrix of uh, a linear transformation t you can say it like that a time x and a it is a rectangular matrix ok that is why a is a matrix of linear transformation. So, if that is the situation then uh, we had already seen that two product matrices first one is uh, a right product and second one is left product ok left product okay if that is the situation then uh, these two product matrices are symmetric in nature so we can directly apply a spectral theorem to get orthonormal eigen basis okay if you are getting orthonormal eigen basis then what are the relation between those two set of orthonormal eigen basis with the matrix a Okay, with the matrix A, that means here we are getting two set of orthonormal uh, eigen basis. First one is V kind of basis. We will call it V is actually eigen vector of uh, right uh, product matrix. Okay, if V is eigen vector of right product matrix, so this V we will call this V we will call right similar vector of matrix A and correspondingly the multiplier will be right singular value of the given matrix A ok ok this sigma is actually what sigma is a square root of the corresponding eigen value of product matrix a square root of eigen value so in the first theorem you can see that I have already mentioned so it is a, regarding uh, sigma is a square root of eigen value of product matrices sigma is the singular value of A and V is the right singular vector of the matrix A. Why? Because V is right, V is eigen vector of right product matrix. That is why V we are calling it right singular vector of the matrix A. Okay. Likewise, U is eigen value of left product matrix. That is why U will call it left singular vector of the matrix A and sigma would be the corresponding eigen value ok why because both product matrices share the same set of non zero eigen values rest of eigen values would be zero that no, same set of non zero eigen values so that's where that criteria is coming oh ok so furthermore if you talk about uh, non zero eigen value of singular uh, it implies simply we will talk about uh, uh, that competition this is the competition process what we we have to solve this one is the characteristic polynomial of the right product matrix we have to solve it in the same way we have to solve all these okay okay and just you can leave all these this competition again i have discussed several times okay you can leave in the same process what we are uh, now algorithm for computing eigen value and for it is followed by eigen vector okay so one example i have taken here again same 2 by 3 matrix so if you are taking 2 by 3 matrix so define the uh, right product and left product matrix and compute the eigen value first of the a matrix of lower size first compute you have computed this one 3 and 1 for eigen value of this symmetric matrix and then this will have 3 eigen value first uh, these two are non zero so it will be also shared by the right product matrix and the third one would be by default zero if you compute you will come to see that all okay then what you do you compute eigen vector of uh, left product matrix that means u1 u2 and normalize it ok. Uh, so, you got uh, these are left singular vector you will call these are left singular 
vectors okay likewise you will compute eigen vector of uh, right product matrix v1 v2 v3 so these you will call right singular vector and these are orthogonal in nature as well so through construction so these are right singular vector this is the way to compute singular pair of a rectangle matrix so we are getting two set of orthogonal orthonormal uh, eigen eigen kind of vector okay so left singular vector and right singular vector due to rectangular nature okay further I, I, another example i have taken here so if you are taking a non a square matrix this one is a square matrix but it is non uh, it is not symmetric it is not symmetric you can easily see that it is not symmetric here you can observe that uh, it is a transpose is not equal to a not non symmetric kind of matrix we have taken it is a square but it is not symmetric it is not equal to uh, a transpose is not equal to a in that case uh, we a question has been raised that find orthonormal basis v1 and v2 because it is a operation from a two, it is a 2 by 2 matrix so operation from r2 to r2 it define a linear operation from r2 to r2 okay so we have to find for orthonormal uh, basis for of r2 such that okay such that images of orthonormal images of orthonormal vector would be again orthonormal l of v1 l of v1 means a time v1 okay l of v1 means a time v1 l of v2 means a time v2 both would if v1 v2 are orthogonal then there is a property that a time uh, the corresponding images would be also orthogonal in nature okay so that we are willing to find that one is a theorem simply but uh, if you are willing to compute we have to compute it through singular pairs okay next we have to prove that if you are taking a unit circle that means if you are taking unit vector and you take all possible linear combination of that that will make a circle unit circle okay now if you are taking a unit circle in r2 and you apply a, a non symmetric uh, linear transformation then it will be uh, mapped to the unit circle will be mapped to an ellipse that means if you are taking unit circle like this way this is the circle this will be transformed to an ellipse so it is one kind of thing something like this ellipse kind of thing okay so that situation is coming here so this statement is clear from the class of transformation that so if t is a orthogonal transformation then any two orthogonal so when we will say that if these two are uh, images of these two orthogonal vector would be again orthogonal so it is only possible when t is a orthogonal transformation then we will say that corresponding images would be orthogonal as well now if what one is scenario second scenario is if a is a symmetric matrix then l of x equal to ax and y is a symmetric matrix that can also thanks to a spectral theorem we can say that corresponding images of v1 and v2 would be orthogonal in nature okay so in two cases we can find but what about in third case that means a is neither of uh, these two that neither is orthogonal matrix nor a symmetric matrix then how you will Uh, talk about that means singular nature kind of matrix what i am saying that so in that case you have to come up with a product matrices that this one is right product matrix and this one is uh, okay right product matrix or uh, left product matrix so if you are coming with that and under this scenario you will come up with uh, v1 v2 and u1 in u2 and those would be uh, those which would up preserve orthogonality you can see it here like that to in that way if u1 and u2 are uh, here we are not computing directly eigen vector of uh, eigen pair of matrix a we are computing eigen pair of uh, product matrices product matrices that is the beauty okay eigen product. so in that case if v1 v1 and v2 are orthogonal then correspondingly we can say that a time v1 and a time v2 would be orthogonal as well here remember that a is not a orthogonal matrix neither a symmetric matrix okay so despite of that but we are not computing eigen vector of a we are computing eigen vector of product matrices okay so that is the thing and the pro, pro, that result can be established through this uh, inner product computation easily you can say that a, if you take a time u1 uh, inner product of a time u1 with a, a time u2 so as per definition what is coming here uh, that transpose of a time u1 into a time u2 okay and uh, just uh, do uh, apply uh, property of uh, transpose of product of two uh, matrices mat 
matrices that vector also is matrix so you can uh, simplify it like this way u1 transpose a transpose u uh, a a time u2 okay and what we observe here what is u2 actually u2 is the uh, uh, eigen vector of uh, a transpose a so we can write it lambda 2 times u2 so lambda 2 will come out and lambda 2 equal to uh, lambda 2 times inner product of u1 u1 with u2 and we had already computed it as an eigen vector of uh, the, uh, symmetric matrix so these are perpendicular to each other so what would be value of this one? 0. Lambda 2 times 0 is 0. So we can see that if u1 and u2 are uh, orthogonal, the corresponding images are also, also orthogonal. So easily we can see orthogonality. But remember that here u1, u2 and v1, v2 are not uh, eigen values, eigen vector of A. These are singular vector of A. Okay. So here the symmetry, why? It is coming thanks to symmetricity of the product matrices. So you can see that it is a symmetric matrix. Easily you can see that the uh, off diagonal element are same. You can see that it is a symmetric matrices and just compute eigenvalues. So I first eigenvalue, the first eigenvalue is the largest eigenvalue and it is a 2 by 2 matrix. So first eigenvalue is 100, second eigenvalue is uh, 25. Okay. So uh, with respect to 100, you will get eigenvector this. With respect to 25, you will get eigenvector this. So, if you are getting this, what is the singular value, correspondingly singular value to the square root of eigenvalue? So, sig sigma 1 would be a square root of uh, lambda 1, okay. And that lambda 1 is 100. So, sigma 1 would be 10. Sigma 1 would be 10. So, you got singular value and the corresponding uh, singular vector. Uh, likewise, what is sigma 2? It is a square root of lambda 2. Remember that lambda 1, lambda 2 are eigenvalue of uh, product matrices. So it is a square root of lambda 2. And what is that? 20, a square root of 25. A square root of 25 is 5. So you got, these are the singular value. You got it. Okay. So uh, we have already discussed. It is also giving further uh, result regarding to compute length of the uh, image corresponding images of uh, orthonormal vector so so if you talk about uh, image of t of u1 uh, take better a square a square of norm we always represent in term of inner product so that one computation is much easier so we are taking like that and then later we will convert it into a square root so a square of norm of uh, t of u, image of u1 it if you compute it through again inner product and the definition of t approach and the definition of uh, uh, ui Okay, u1. So you will come to know that it is equal to lambda 1 times a square of norm of u1. And we know that it is a unit vector. Okay. So what is the square of length of image of u1? It is equal to lambda 1. Okay. So what is the length of image of u1? It is actually a square root of lambda 1. A square root of lambda 1 that we call it sigma 1. Okay. So this one is the length of image, Im image of the corresponding eigen, uh, singular vector. Singular vector. So, if you uh, likewise, you can compute length of image of u2. Uh, that one is sigma 2, a square root of lambda 2. So, you can see that here. Uh, here we have taken uh, unit circle. Okay, under the rectangular non-symmetric matrix. Here, A is non-symmetric matrix. The unit circle has been uh, mapped to, transformed to an ellipse. Okay, if you are talking about ellipse, then ellipse is having two different kind of axes. One is semi-major and another one is semi-minor. Okay, so semi-major, what is the length of semi-major axis? That we call it first singular value. That means a square root of lambda 1. Uh, that means sigma 1. We call it sigma 1. Sigma 1 is 10. This is the length of uh, uh, semi-major axis. Okay, that one is 10. And this is the length of semi-minor axis. That one is sigma 2. And value of sigma 2, just we had computed, it is equal to 5. So we got uh, all possible characterization of ellipse as an image of uh, what we call uh, unit circle in domain. This one is in domain. So here A is a 2 by 2 matrix and non-symmetric, remember that. Uh, so And it has been mapped to it has transformed it it has been mapped to it is a transformation non symmetric matrix transformation from r2 to r2 okay r2 to r2 which uh, is not a symmetric matrix that's why circle has been transformed to uh, 
uh, ellipse and all orthogonality pattern is there already it is followed okay so that will those are property of uh, uh, what we call it product matrices of a rectangular matrix or uh, non symmetric matrix so we are coming with a uh, all those things what we have already got uh, discussed we will come to write all those things in a uh, theor theorematic in theorem in term of a theorem so consider t is a linear transformation from rn to rm okay rn to rm okay so you can rn to rm we call it rm then there exists an orthonormal basis uh, uh, u1 u2 up to un of rn such that we can say that vector images this corresponding images would be also orthogonal and the length of in corresponding images r happens to be singular value of the matrix rectangular matrix a that criteria is coming here okay and uh, we know that uh, the singular eigen value of the product uh, any symmetric matrix always come in uh, decreasing order like the first eigen value will be the largest then second then third and fourth so by calculating when you calculate you might have already seen that and so correspondingly we can say that eigen values uh, singular values would have the same order first would be the largest the second then third and likewise okay and here just in order to validate all these same example we have taken take a rectangular matrix uh, 2 by 3 matrix having entry 0 1 1 uh, 1 1 0 so here what we have to question the question is find the singular value of a the second find the orthonormal vectors u1 u2 u3 in r r3 okay r3 such that the corresponding images would be orthonormal remember that here codomain is r2 this uh, under this matrix we can say that it define a linear transformation from r3 to r2 r2 so u3 will map to 0 so that mapping also you can see here uh, during the computation so it is com computationally feasible always computationally feasible because theoretically it is verified T is a linear transformation from R3 to R2 because 2 by 3, three matrix we have taken. So here first compute uh, uh, the product matrix A transpose A. So this is the A transpose A. The correspondingly we will get uh, lambda 1 equal to first eigenvalue is 3, second eigenvalue is 1 and third eigenvalue is uh, 0. Why I am saying first eigenvalue, second eigenvalue, third eigenvalue because this one is a symmetric matrix. The product matrix is a symmetric matrix so we can talk about ordering in the eigenvalues okay the correspondingly we will get singular value of the uh, given matrix a okay so the, so as, by doing a, a square root of the eigenvalues so the, lambda 1 equal to a square root of 3 lambda sorry sigma 1 equal to a square root of 3 sigma 2 is a square root of uh, 1 that means 1 itself sigma 3 is a square root of 0 that means 0 itself okay uh, correspondingly we will get um, eigen vector 1 2 1 uh, 1 0 1 that means singular vector for a okay uh, 1 0 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 so you can say that 1 to 1 is eigen vector corresponding to eigen value of the product matrix 3 uh, 1 0 minus 1 is eigen vector of product matrix a, uh, a transpose a with respect to eigen value 1 and 1 minus 1 1 it is an eigen vector of product matrix a a transpose a with respect to eigen value 0 so that computation you know so we can compute all these okay and if you are you can denote uh, these if you try to see these are orthogonal to each other orthogonal to each other so uh, orthogonal so we have to just normalize all these so normalize uh, all these in order to make uh, unit orthonormal vectors we have to so it is orthonormal eigen basis for left product mat right product matrix a transpose a okay then if you talk about uh, a unit of square in r3 what kind of form it would be? it would be linear combination of u1 u2 u3 okay it is coming as a linear combination of this one such that if you uh, if you are taking linear combination of this one it is again in uh, in uh, in a square so in r3 unit of square would be what it will uh, it will have uh, uh, three three coordinate and uh, we have taken a basis u1 u2 u3 okay orthonormal basis we have taken so we can say that if you are taking any vector on the surface that would have norm 1 and hence a square of norm is equal to 1 so we can say that um, alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus alpha 3 square equal to 1 we can say it like this way okay now let us compute the image of x which is on the surface of this unit sphere 
okay in r if you if you talk uh, uh, in r3 unit uh, ball it is a sphere in r2 unit ball is a uh, circle so that kind of thing is coming here so what is t image of t of x it is alpha 1 times t of u1 plus alpha 2 times t of u2 and t of u3 will map to 0 because there is no third coordinate in r2 okay third coordinate r2 is a two dimensional space so t of uh, u1 uh, t of u3 it will map to 0 as per computation also you can see, see it is it will map to 0 0 because the codomain is having dimension 2. So, one we get with respect to image of u1, another with we get with respect to image of u2. So, here if you are willing to find norm of uh, image of x, so what would be this one? It will just involve alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square and we had already seen that alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus alpha uh, 3 square it is equal to 1. So, just we left one alpha 3 square so by default alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square equal to what 1 minus alpha 3 square so this quantity will be always less than equal to 1 so what we observe that if you are taking a hollow a sphere in r3 it is mapped to a full ellipse this one is actually unit ellipse ellipse in r2 this under the map 2 by given 2 by 2 matrix okay so it is a, so that's that's a hollow sphere has been mapped to a full ellipse elliptical uh, object in r2 so this one is r3 domain is r3 because a was uh, 2 by 3 matrix so that's why domain would be r3 and our codomain would be r2 codomain would be r2 so that result we are getting it so all these thanks to uh, singular value uh, of singular pairs singular value and singular vector now we will summarize all these as a singular value decomposition what is singular value decomposition so uh, consider an m by n rectangle matrix a uh, having rank it is rank rank r okay it may be full rank it may be less than uh, full, uh, full rank okay so then a will have r number of non zero singular values why because the corresponding product matrices will have an R number of non-zero singular values. So, that is where corresponding singular values, non-zero singular value would be uh, R in count. Okay. And we are giving name to those. What are those? Sigma 1, Sigma 2, up to Sigma R. And uh, how many non-zero singular value we will have? N minus R. Okay. Uh, what we name we are giving? Uh, sigma R plus 1, Sigma R plus 2, up to Sigma N. Okay. This would be zero eigenvalues. Okay. Zero uh, singular value. Okay. So, we have to choose vectors uh, that uh, orthonormal eigen basis u1, u2, uh, up to ur with respect to uh, sing, uh, non zero singular values, and uh, these are with respect to uh, zero singular values. Okay. For right, right product matrix, such that what we will observe if you multiply a with ui you will get sigma i time ui. So, this relation is very important. Uh, I would like to highlight here. There is a theorem I have written for this. So, here I am saying that uh, V is a right singular uh, right singular uh, vector of uh, the given matrix A. That means, uh, why? Because right singular uh, vector, because it is a uh, eigen vector of it is a eigen vector of uh, we call it right product matrix. It is equal to sigma time v, okay, or lambda. You can say that here. Lambda you can put here. Better eigen vector we always denote by lambda. Okay. So what is happening that? So if that is the situation, if you multiply, so here v is a eigen vector of here it implies that V is an eigen vector of uh, right product matrix. So, V is an uh, under this definition it say that V is an eigen vector for 
right product matrix that means a transpose a okay a transpose a as per definition of eigen vector and eigen pair whatever you call so now what you do you multiply here both side with a multiply both side with a what we will get multiply both uh, pre multiplication with a pre multiplication with a okay what you will get you will get a into a transpose time a into v okay so this one is what uh, matrix multiplication it is associated in nature that means bracket moves and in left hand side we have done pre multiplication with a so in left, right hand side also we do pre multiplication with a and lambda is a scalar so a scalar will come out we will have here a time v okay so pre multiplication both side we have done so if you uh, talk about matrix multiplication multiplication it is associated in nature so bracket move bracket moves leftward so what you will get here you will get it here like this pattern a time a transpose equal to na multiplied with a time v equal to lambda time a time v so what you observe here you observe that if v is an eigen vector of right product matrix a transpose a then a time v you call it u it is an eigen vector of left product matrix left product matrix that means a into a transpose so here if you get eigen vector or eigen value of one set of product matrix you will get eigen value eigen vector of another set of product matrix so here you can see that so the relation between in u and v you can easily see that what is u what is u actually uh you can say that here it is coming like this way so uh, uh if you talk about uh, uh, singular value kind of notation so is lambda you write in term of sigma lambda is what sigma square lambda is uh, so here you can say that it is sigma square and you do normalize also here you have to normalize all these so after normalization you will come to see this picture actually uh, this picture you will come to if you normalize all these so you will see that uh, a time v equal to sigma time u if you normalize you divide uh, v by norm of v and u by norm of u then it will cancel out one sigma it will come this side and sigma here simply this relation you will get if after normalizing this one is unnormalized version so after normalizing you will get this structure you will get this structure so this uh, notation you can say that here v is what right singular vector u is left singular vector and after normalizing you are getting this pattern and this leads to singular value decomposition this leads to singular value decomposition okay so that in short we can write singular decomposition in short way how we are writing so that in the last slide also i have talk about derivation as well so we are having time concern so within one hour we have to finish all this so here singular value decomposition in summary how we write it so you had already seen that a is coming as how equal to sorry a time a time v in the last slide you have seen a time v v is the right singular vector vector in normalized form we are taking it equal to sigma time u okay so uh, if you take all possible v i that means uh, we are uh, i am talking about v matrix what is v matrix v matrix is actually uh, a matrix whose columns are 
v1 v2 up to vl so first column is v1 is normalized form okay so ortho, ortho, simply i am saying orthonormal vectors okay uh, orthonormal singular vector okay orthonormal singular vector so first column is of b is v1 second column is v2 likewise uh, it will go up to vl nth column it will have n number of columns so it is vn okay okay so if you take matrix inside then what you will observe here uh, a time v1 a time v1 here you write here a time v1 remember that a is neither symmetric nor uh, that uh, uh, you can uh, it is rectangular not not non symmetric and rectangular or rectangular second column would be a time v2 okay it is coming like this way and that last column would be a time vn so a time vn okay so you are getting this matrix and a time v1 would be what it would be equal to sigma 1 time u1 that means uh, the left singular vector a time v2 would be what sigma 2 time u2 okay and likewise how many uh, uis you will get you will get m number of uis okay here not n number of ui because m and n are different uh, different if it is same then you will get same okay otherwise no issue so sorry not a here it would be sigma m time ui also you have to see relative comparison between m and n which one is greater than which one is smaller so if you are taking rectangular size sigma m time u m you are getting it okay so what you do again apply matrix product product of two matrices in the linear combination format what i had explained explain so this multiplication you can write it as how you will write it you will write it as u matrix time sigma matrix sigma matrix is what uh, it is a diagonal matrix where diagonal entries are coming from sigma 1 sigma 2 up to sigma n so it is a diagonal matrix so you so a time b equal to uh, u times sigma and what is v v is n by n matrix and m is m by n matrix so these are what a square matrix and orthogonal matrix why why because these are constructed the as per construction v and u are orthogonal matrix so what would be from here what you will deduce so a we will write as if you do uh, post multiplication with inverse of v here v is orthogonal matrix so inverse of v would be just v transpose v into v transpose will be identity matrix and in right hand side we will have uh, u time sigma time v transpose and this is the ultimate notation of singular value decomposition of a rectangular matrix singular value decomposition and uh, if you try to visualize all these things here in geometry so in geometry you can see it here just with geometry i will wind up all these okay if you are willing to visualize in geometry so you can see it here like this way so what you uh, two by two matrix i have taken m equal to uh, two and n equal to two both i have taken two here so here it is coming like this way so we are taking a mat a matrix two by two matrix that means which is defined from r2 to r2 so in the domain we are taking two orthonormal vector v1 and v2 okay and this is first uh, it will be uh, mapped to a uh, ellipse then uh, ellipse okay then it will rotate it uh, in a balanced way along 
horizontal axis so it is just uh, what kind of matrix it do orthogonal matrix okay uh, this one is transformation uh, unit circle to ellipse uh, this one is just rotation we are rotating ellipse to make it uh, uh, horizontal axis corresponding horizontal and vertical axis as semi major and semi minor okay then further what we do uh, uh here you can so actually this transform like this way so for was first what we do uh, we here if you talk about 8 equal to u uh, time sigma time v transpose so if you take any vector x u and that means uh, x is multiplied first with uh, v transpose v transpose is what kind of matrix it is a orthogonal matrix so here uh, orthogonal matrix just do trans rotation it is not doing more than anything just rotation so that means you can see it here here uh, you have taken a unit circle and you multiply with v transpose with x any point from on the unit circle so you got uh, just uh, the, this kind of uh, rotation we observe okay then after rotation we are multiplying with uh, a scaling matrix sigma is a scaling matrix or we can call it uh, that uh, sigma the sing with respect to singular value okay a scaling matrix or diagonal matrix so what we'll do it will uh, just uh, extend scale the corresponding uh, axes so here a scale so in, if in the process of a scaling it becomes the circle becomes a ellipse okay then after we are multiplying u so u do rotation so it has been rotated so in order to see a fact of a directly from unit circle to the, this ellipse you can come through this approach this is the approach this approach orthogonal uh a scaling then orthogonal again so every matrix whatever kind of matrix whether it is uh, non symmetric or rectangular matrix and general kind of matrix actually you do perform three kind of operation first you do rotate then you do a scaling then you do rotation again so that one is the summary of singular value decomposition or geometric intuition what we call it okay just we are having 3 minute so within 3 minute i will take example two example here so here if you are taking a matrix 2 by 2 matrix definitely it is a non symmetric matrix otherwise we can apply a spectral theorem it is if it is a symmetric matrix so 6 minus 7 to 6 okay first column is this one second column is this one just we have to find uh, that uh, right singular vector this one is the right singular vector we have to orthonormalize okay and this is the second right singular vector okay and uh, these are the left singular vector easily we can get it okay uh, by multiplying a with b1 okay and mul by multiplying a with b2 we can get it complete this one so we are having v this one is a orthogonal matrix we can call it uh, right singular matrix and we uh, similarly we will get left singular matrix okay and sigma is actually uh, diagonal matrix so first diagonal entry non, it is coming with respect to singular value first singular value that one is 10 and second singular value is 5 so it is a diagonal matrix simply we are getting it and we can easily verify that if you multiply these three matrix you will get back a so we can say that a has been decomposed into three special matrix rotation matrix Uh, a scaling matrix and rotation matrix so every matrix can be done in that way under the singular value decomposition if you are taking a rectangular matrix and you will get this right singular matrix uh, this one is the left singular matrix uh, this is the uh, diagonal type of matrix it is not a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix is always a square matrix so it is a diagonal type matrix what we call it diagonal type this so here this is the uh, always you will get a diagonal matrix a uh, rest of things would be zero rest of thing would be zero entries here so here again it satisfy that we have decompose a as product of three matrices rotation matrix a scaling matrix and uh, rotation matrix again so that is the ultimate uh, aim of singular value decomposition if anyone is having any question you can ask otherwise just we are uh, finishing this course any question